Everybody can relax. I've got the answer. I've got you covered. It's all going to get better. It's all going to be fine. All we have to do is elect the senile imbecile Joe Biden to be president of the United States. And then we're good. That's all you have to do. Coronavirus will go away. The economy will come back. Everything will be great if you elevate this deeply unimpressive and honestly just too old and too out of it for the job buffoon to the most powerful job in the world. This now understand the people that shame you for not being uh, woke and the people that think that you're uh, foolish and and an, a disgrace at family dinners or, you know, whatever, because you voted for Trump. They really they will look you in the face. They will look you in the eye and they'll say with a straight face. Joe Biden will get it done. Joe Biden is an idiot. OK, there's nothing about this guy that has ever, ever been impressive. And and the fact that he's going to be held up against Trump as some huge improvement is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. But this is what they're going to do. And if you don't go along with it, you're a bad person. You're a bad person. First off, I mean, yet another you know, the guy can't open his mouth without saying something that sounds like Mad Libs done by drunk teenagers at 3 a.m. But he, here you go. Here's Joe Biden on Joe Biden. Play 17. Good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Lily already indicated, I'm Joe Biden's husband, Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Joe Biden's husband, uh, Joe Biden. Nice. Good job there, buddy. What else do we know about Joe Biden these days? Oh, he gave a speech, and I, I won't play the whole thing for you, but it's pretty straight. He gave us a little speech about uh, Independence Day weekend where he's just like, yeah, we didn't really live up to our, we're not really that great, but, you know, we kind of stink sometimes as a country, but, you know, We'll work together if you just elect me. Everything will be cool. Promise. That was basically the speech. That America is disappointing. That America isn't what we all, those of us who are patriots and and celebrate this country. Democrats weren't celebrating America this weekend. And I don't just mean Colin Kaepernick, who said that the 4th of July was, quote, a celebration of white supremacy. Wow. Wow. There you go. Colin Kaepernick, everybody. A guy who has made tens of millions of dollars to be a generally mid-tier professional quarterback in the NFL and now is elevated as, as a civil rights icon who has said horrible things about cops and about the country. But he, he is, uh, y- you almost, you almost got to give him credit he has pulled off a, a switch here. He has pulled off a transformation of his brand that corporate consultants would have to think long and hard to figure out how they could do something like this. Remarkable, remarkable. He's a hero for taking no risk, for elevating himself, and for saying things that tear, tear down the rest of the country. Now we're at a point where if you take a knee, you're a good person, If you just stand for the national anthem, as this happened in a women's soccer match recently, you will have to explain why were you standing? Why would you show respect to the flag? We've gone from how dare you disrespect the flag to how dare you respect the flag? That's where we are right now in the culture as a country. And for heaven's sakes, Hamilton, the beloved by liberals, Hamilton Broadway play, and, you know, Lin-Manuel Miranda and, and, you know, oh, my gosh. They're saying that his celebration of the founders now, the founders as portrayed by minority actors, that is not woke enough because that's a an elevation of the American founding. How do we even how, where do you even start with this? But this is what happens. They've they've controlled the culture for decades and very stupid Republicans still say, uh, I don't think that there's anything about a culture war that really matters. We just need to win elections. 
Oh, okay. You just need to win elections. Kind of tough to do that when basic, not just Republican Party uh, issues and platform, but when basic conversation that involves free thinking and the rule of law and the foundation of America and the celebration of the founders, that is pushed out of the sphere of what is publicly acceptable. Do you think we're going to win elections in that environment? Oh, I mean, I know they say, oh, but there'll be a huge backlash to this. I don't know. I haven't seen the backlash yet. Still waiting for that backlash to kick in and all of a sudden it to be fashionable again for people to support the founders and to shout down all this insanity, all this absurdity that's currently overtaking America. And one of the absurdities that will overtake America is, of course, our our friend here, Mr. Joe Biden. Here is what he uh, here's just an, another Bidenism for you about. Yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take over and I'm going to be I'm going to be real smart as Joe Biden because, you know, stuff. Play clip 16. When we win this election, we're going to get the support you need and the respect you deserve. You don't just have a partner in the White House. You'll have an NEA member in the White House. And if I'm not listening, I'm going to be sleeping alone in the Lincoln bedroom. What? An NEA member in the White House or he'll be sleeping alone in the Lincoln bedroom? What? This is the, and this is the stuff that you hear from him when he's hiding in the basement. You know, it's, it's not like he's out there for everyone to see and talk to and everything these days. No, no, no. These these are the the Bidenisms that make their way out from the you know hermetically sealed uh, environment that he's operating in. Right. That's that's the truth. This is what you're seeing of this guy. It's absurd. It's absurd. Oh, wait, there's more Biden. Uh, just rewriting history. People might call this a lie, but it's not clear when Biden says something that's not true. If he's just confused or if he really thinks it. Play clip 18. Uh, I, I, you know, I know there are a number of issues in everybody. But an immediate challenge is uh, the continued spread of the coronavirus and what it means in the upcoming school year. Look, we saw this, uh, this challenge coming. I've been calling for the president to address it for months since early, since late January. But Donald Trump failed to take any action on testing, contact tracing, creating responsible standards, uh, everything we need to do to keep the pandemic under control. Calling for Trump to address it since late January. Gee, you know, I'm going to just start criticizing people. I call for Joe Biden to address Global inequality. Why hasn't he fixed global inequality? I called for him to address it. I call for Joe Biden to address height disparity among American males. What is he going to? Jesse Kelly would love this one. What is he going to do about the fact that there are some people who are, you know, on the shorter end and there are some people who are six, six. Why has I've called on him to address this? I mean, address it. How? What? Do what? You're going to do the Nancy Pelosi test, take, test, take, test, take. What does that even mean now? That people can get tested all over the country. OK, you get tested. You know, you find out that you're a young, healthy person with COVID-19. Then what? Oh, we're going to do tracing. That's how we're. No, you're not. The tracing thing is is insane. They're catching one out of 10 actual transmissions that are happening every day. They're telling us 50,000 transmissions a day. That's 500,000 new cases a day in the country. They're going to track all those people down. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. You may have uh, exposed. But they they pretend like that's what they're going to do. Oh, it's so stupid. And they think that you're the crazy one. Or if you're listening to me and you agree with anything I'm saying, they think that we're the crazy people here. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for them to start looking at what is instead of what they have said in the past and what they want to be. There's it's a it's a very it's a complicated it's a complicated issue right now just to get the left, the Democrats, the libs to look at the most obvious truths of our fight against covid-19 and look at those obvious truths about Joe Biden and admit them. Nope. 
No one will give any ground. No one will give any ground to facts, reason, or sanity from the other side. They think that that's a weakness. My man DC Drano is back in the mix, better known to the authorities and the IRS as Rogan O'Handley. Uh, but he is the guy behind the DC Drano account, which does fantastic conservative memes, commentary, and all the rest of it. Rogan, thanks for coming back, man. Appreciate you hanging out. Thanks for having me back on, Buck. Great to be here. So, my friend, tell me, what the heck is happening in America today? Let's just start at the broad. Well, I think uh, the left is waging a war on the entire foundation of this country, and the right is still talking politics. And that misalignment of where we are in terms of prioritizing this stuff is leading to lawlessness, property destruction, and anarchy. And too many people on the right have been too quiet, not me, not you. But uh, it's time to wake up and take this very seriously, what's going on. This is no longer about George Floyd. This is about hating America and the very foundation that this country was built upon. Freedom, liberty, the rule of law. Now, one of the areas where conservatives in the digital age have made cultural strides, I'd say, or at least where we have a, a good arsenal in the culture war is on memes, right? Showing the hypocrisy in these, you know, pithy visualizations or short clips. And 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 this uh, we, we can share this all over. And I know this is how you've had such a, a huge presence, uh, Rogan, online with the D.C. Drano account. But are, are you do, do you feel like people are more afraid to share your stuff on their own Facebook pages? Like, do you hear from anybody who's like, look, man, I, I love that meme, but. I can't put that on my stuff because I work for, you know, in a tech corporation and I got to do my TPS reports and I don't want to get fired. Absolutely. We, we're living through a major double standard. People on the left can post whatever they want about whatever political belief they have, no matter how extreme. People on the right have to stay quiet. If you're a Trump supporter, if you're a conservative, if you love America, you have to stay quiet because if you make one small mistake in terms of how you frame your very moderate political positions, you will, you could be targeted by a digital mob and fired from your job. I know multiple people that this has happened to. It's a shame. I, and, and I have a friend named David. He runs an account called Brokeback Patriot meme, meme account. He's got uh, over 70,000 followers. He posted All Lives Matter on his Facebook. He voted for Obama twice. He's gay. He got fired from his job of four years because two or three Antifa people, literal Antifa, who Trump has now designated domestic terrorists, said, we're going to boycott your company, your cafe, if you don't fire this employee. Two days later, he was fired. Unbelievable. That's yeah, all, That's all lives big. matter. All Lives Matter is now something that is considered uh, a, a fireable offense, which just goes to show the degree of the insanity that, that we're talking about here. H how could that even be? But that is where we are. I'm sure you might have seen that this uh, this aerospace executive who got fired from his job because 30 years ago he wrote an article about how he didn't think that women should be in forward deployed combat roles for X, Y. Fired today for what he wrote 30 years ago in an academic setting. This is the country. And, and, and now the left, Rogan, is telling us, oh, there is no culture war. This is a figment of, of the right's imagination. There's just responsibility for your actions. I mean, the gaslighting is thermonuclear. Thermonuclear. They, there is a culture war. In fact, it's probably the most important political battlefield right now. The left has almost it put entranced the right into thinking we cannot legislate morality. We should not be involved in the culture war. Government should not be involved, but that is all they are doing. They're attacking, they're infiltrating and attacking all cultural institutions. Hollywood wasn't enough. Academia wasn't enough. Now they're going into sports, NFL, NASCAR. They're trying to go after anything that shows some type of pride in America, some form of unity where it doesn't matter what color skin you are 
It just matters that we're all Americans together. They hate that. They say people on the right are causing the racial division. It's them. It's 100% them. It, race relations were actually improving under Trump. The polls were there before the whole George Floyd thing, which was terrible, but they, they want this country to be divided because when we are divided, the left thrives. Speaking to Rogan O'Hanley, the man behind the D.C. Drano uh, Instagram and, and social media accounts, Sharon memes. He's he's memeing the left all over the place. It's fantastic. And and I, I wanted to ask, though, Rogan, about whether they've come for you on the various platforms. You know, how, how do you gauge? Because people ask me this. Oh, what can I post or how far can I go? And I have to tell them, honestly, I, I don't know. Right. I, I, I don't know what your workplace will take action against you for. And I'm not even sure the workplace knows. They just sort of deal with it ad hoc, whatever scares them, whenever the mob yells. But also, uh, you know, I've had videos demonetized uh, off of YouTube and, and I'm a pretty polite guy. I got to. <laughs> but, you know, can't say, you know, can't say all lives matter. Can't put certain stuff on YouTube. How do you as somebody that's always out there in the culture war as a meme maker uh, deal with the constantly shifting rules around these platforms that are the best we've got right now. I know Parler is growing, but this is what we've got to deal with. I try and pay close attention to the, to the changing uh, community guidelines on the various platforms. I do try and respect them. I think that until Trump's executive order, which was a great start, until the spirit of it is enacted into legislation, uh, federal law, state law, with people being able to hold these social media, you know, titans accountable in the courtroom for their censorship, for their acting like a publisher instead of a platform. Until those laws are in place, I, I try and I try and behave because when it comes down to it, they can delete you and you have almost no form of recourse to get your account back. So I try and obey the community guidelines. Uh, for, for people that are, you know, have jobs, have businesses where politics is going to have a a negative, uh, you know, kind of toxic effect. I honestly, I say lay low right now. Things are a little crazy until we get some too. laws in place. Yeah, I, I will do everything I can to speak for you. I left my legal career so that they couldn't fire me, right? I, I had found ways to, to keep myself financially afloat, but I have so many people from celebrities down to local police that say, thank you for speaking up. You have a lot of silent supporters. And it's a damn shame that we in America cannot publicly support the president of the United States, the constitution or our flag without worrying that our livelihood is gonna be taken away from us. That is what motivates me. That's what makes me wanna fight even harder to make sure that people can, so we can have freedom of speech again. D.C. Drano, everybody. Rogan O'Hanley is the man behind it. Check out his accounts on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, Rogan, man, thank you for the work you do and for joining us. We appreciate it. Stay in the fight, my friend. Thank you, and all the work you do as well, Buck. Appreciate it. It is roll call time, everybody. Team Buck at iHeartMedia.com if you want to email us. Facebook.com slash Buck Sexton if you want to Facebook message us. And let's get to it, shall we? But uh, but first, oh, and remember to go to BuckSexton.com. We post things there. And we'll have a Buck Brief up on Facebook, uh, if not later today, certainly by tomorrow. Please watch it, share it. Send it around and let's get to it, shall we? Uh, we have. Oh, wait, producer Mark, how was your Fourth of July weekend slash Independence Day celebration? Uh, different than usual. Uh, I did see some friends uh, on Friday and uh, we watched Hamilton on Saturday, stayed in. All right. Uh, and tell tell everybody your review of Hamilton. It's OK. It's it's great. Yeah. I mean, I know. Uh, now I'm going to have to watch it. About it is true. Now we're going to have to I'm going to have to watch it. I don't know. I'm shocked you didn't already. Yeah, I know. Well, I wasn't going to pay seven hundred dollars to see it on Broadway. You know. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a much better experience. I mean, I, I told my wife I got you front row tickets. I cooked you dinner. I didn't have to pay for parking. I didn't have to pay for a crappy dinner around Midtown. 
and there was nobody else around. Yeah, I, I, I'm a. I just got to say, I mean, if I'm not somebody that really tends to be a, a live and in person guy, I prefer to watch things or enjoy things in my own environment where I control everything. So that's just me. So even like going to an NFL game versus watching NFL game at home and having the barbecue that I've picked up or whatever food I've got, it, you know, it, I just I'm one of those. Well, it depends on the sport there. NFL, I agree, is a football sport, but like a hockey game something different about it in person yeah it's awesome to be next to a giant ice cube so you can be freezing oh my god you live in new york and you have most of your life yeah i know but it's still very cold i've been to hockey games very cold it's true i mean i yes but wear a sweater i mean what do you want me to say that's a fair point okay let's get to it bill first up to the great producer mark and he whose name that shall not be spoken i feel deceived because for months we've been promised a siege of malta podcast this has not been a promise you kept I shall not raise my team shield until I am able to hear the Siege of Malta. Thank you. All right, all right, Bill, I know, I know. You and Bruce Mark, and it's just, guys, I, I swear, I'm working. Even Mark knows that I work long hours. I'm just, I'm constantly in the hustle, but uh, I will do it. I just don't want to do a bad version of it, but I think I'm going to do an extemporaneous kind of just like, here's, here's Siege of Malta. Here's what you got to know, and just do the podcast, and I think that's where we're going to go, so that'll be fun. I mean, my advice would be stop saying things on air that you're not going to actually do. There you go. Or, or maybe I'm just going to do it, and then I will have kept all promises. That's true. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. also a possibility. Speaking of which, 844-900-2825, 844-900-BUCK. Uh -huh. Producer Mark wants a flood of post-Independence Day voicemails to listen to this week. I assure you. So light him up. 844-900-2825. He doesn't... Oh, no, no. Mrs. Mark is like, hey, I ordered us some like great, you know, Chinese take it. He's like, no, honey, I can't. I must listen to the Team Buck voicemails. Touche. So exactly. Thomas, uh, I think it's. Oh, wait, no, we'll go to Grant. Sorry. Good evening, Buck. I'm a new podcast listener. Thank you for all you do. You and a handful of others are today's equivalent to the military heroes who stormed Normandy. You guys are risking everything to save America. Thank you for such a phenomenal podcast. Grant, you are far too kind, but Mark and I are just guys trying to do what we can to spread the spread the the truth about America. So I I, I don't I can't say I can't say that we're uh, in the same conversation as the heroes who actually stormed the beaches at Normandy. But ideologically speaking, if you want to move it into that kind of a context, but we do really appreciate the support and the kind words and uh, and yeah, I mean, obviously, if I were a lib, I'd be like a bajillionaire already and. Everybody would always be talking about how great I was, but uh, I'm a conservative. So in New York, that means people hate your guts. Uh, let's see. Thomas, I think it's pretty obvious by now, Buck, that Tony Fauci will keep the momentum and hysteria going until he gets what he needs to fulfill his campaign. If we want to end this nightmare of lockdowns, illegal dictates and insane punishments for violation of them, then we must stop playing this fool's game of hide from the virus. National civil unrest is required. Everyone just throw away the face masks, is ignore the guidelines, and go about living our lives normally. Let Fauci gather his testing results as quickly as possible until he has tested at least 80% of the population and then realizes how futile it has all been. He will test until the next decade if no one stops him. Once his data shows that 99% of those tested positive failed to get sick, he will have to stop. It's just a futile exercise at that point if the public continues to be accommodating sheep this will go on indefinitely well into next year and beyond fauci will not stop until the funding ends and he is told to stop shields high uh thomas thank you for your thoughts here yeah i think that this is we've look i know that we've gone way beyond what we were supposed to because in the early days of this there were promises made in effect to the public this is just about hospital capacity this is a temporary measure this is just dealing with the most extreme situation uh, because that's what we're in right now, but we'll get out of it as quickly as we can. Um, so, yeah, there you have it. Uh, I, I think that we've been dragged into a much longer. I know we've been dragged into a much longer lockdown than they said they would, and they're changing the rules as they go along. And, yeah, this, when is this going to stop? When do we get our lives back? What, what does it take? What's that benchmark? No, no coronavirus cases, because that is going to be probably never. 
So let's just be honest about it, folks. Johnny. Hey, Buck. Haven't heard my name, uh, my location mentioned on roll call. Bangkok, Thailand. Woo. Yeah, Johnny. It's exciting. Doing a great job, both you and producer Mark. I chuckle when you talk about being aware, being unaware of anything current pop culture. I consider that an asset. Retired Army, 1993, and now live more than half my life in Asia. Love the USA, but do enjoy the continuing adventure. Shields high. Well, Johnny, producer Mark and I, now we got a member of the team to visit. We go into, go into Bangkok to party. Producer Mark, you ever been to Thailand? I haven't. Great place. Yeah, oh yeah. A lot of fun. I like Thai food. Thai food is and it's and it's phenomenal there. Uh, so I would I would hope so. True story though, Chinese food in America for American palates often and I found this to be the case, preferable to Chinese food in China. Well, yeah, because we have Americanized Chinese. That's food. right. We have a dip. Whereas like what you're used to as pad thai when you're in Thailand, that's what it tastes like too, except their version might be a little fresher, a little better. Uh, that you'll get even on the street in street carts and such, but yeah, Chinese food is uh, is a different a different situation in in my humble opinion. It's, there's some Italians I know that say chicken parm is not an Italian dish. It's the same thing. Is that really true? Yeah, I have an Italian friend who's adamant that chicken parm is not a thing. So I it was explained to me that calling in the red sauce gravy because a lot of people weighed in on this one. Corn or red sauce gravy is an Italian American thing. So you do this in like the in in the outer reaches of Queens, Staten Island, and Long Island. Yeah, and Jersey. Producer Nick, producer Nick is weighing in on this. What do you got? Neither is spaghetti and amita balls. Spaghetti and amita balls is also not a technically Italian dish, it's American dish. Right? They don't talk like this. Hey, yeah, I, I see the Sopranos. I know how they talk. I know the things. I mean, they may not be actual Italian dishes, but they're delicious. Oh, that's for sure. Well, that is for sure. Um, what is the what is your favorite? It, and producer Nick, you too. You can you you tell me this one on the text. Producer Mark, the best single you get one Italian dish as your last meal on earth. What is it? I think I've said this before. My favorite meal, period, is chicken parm. Oh, chicken parm. Yeah. I did not know that. Chicken parm is very good. I would have to agree. Producer Nick goes chicken marsala. Hmm. It's a strong, strong choice as I'm well. I'm getting hungry. No, no, I, I, I got to say, that's, that's pretty good. For me, I, I've got to say a really good carbonara or a cacio e pepe is probably what i'd go i mean carbonara for me when it's done right is like the greatest thing in the world and i can eat a pound of it but it's unfortunately not diet food so if you're looking to trim a few lbs i would not go heavy on the carbonara is it slightly healthier because it's gluten-free or is nope. just a myth exactly the same oh. in terms of calories exactly the same in fact gluten-free products often have a little bit higher calories than the equivalent so like gluten-free bread can sometimes have more calories than the normal bread you eat. And calories are calorie, my man, when you're talking about carbs. So, yeah. Nope. No no advantage. People aren't like, oh, I'm eating gluten-free. I'm being so healthy. It's like, nah. I mean, maybe gluten is bad for your system. It depends if you're like me, if celiac disease or not, or some people have in, in a, uh, a lower level. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not an allergy, but a... Uh, Tolerance. Yeah, I think into people use intolerance. I think technically intolerance means celiac disease. But anyway... Uh, they have a sensitivity. That's the word I'm looking for. A sensitivity to gluten. Um, but yeah, it doesn't make... It's not like if you eat gluten-free, you're going to be skinny. Unf unfortunately, as I have found out, eating a lot of ice cream, which is generally gluten-free during the pandemic. Well, I'll have to keep looking for the method of uh, being skinny then. All right. Next up on Roll Call, Sue. Hi, Buck and producer Mark. I thought you might be interested in this quote from New Jersey Governor Murphy at his June 29th press conference with regard to requiring travelers from hotspots to quarantine. And so this is simply, frankly, I never thought I'd say these words. If I could build a wall around us or our region, I would, but we can't. And so we have to rely on personal responsibility and the right behavior, the common sense for the common good. 
End of quote. Do you suppose he means that he supports the wall on our southern border? Sue, I see what you did there. Um, No, of course not. Walls on the southern border, we are told, will not, do not work. But a wall to keep people out of New Jersey. Look, he was being, uh, I don't know if the word is facetious or hyperbolic or, you know, he he wasn't. I don't think he really meant that they should build a wall around New Jersey. But I see your point, Sue, that walls obviously work. It is a little distressing that states that at one point, New York and New Jersey were like, hey, don't don't ban our people from coming to visit your state when it was really bad here. And now we're like, oh, whoa, Texas and Florida and Georgia and Arizona don't come up into the northeast. You know, so another another double standard set by Democrat politicians here. It's either we're are we all in this together or not. You know, it seems to change depending on the day. Paul, who is the snow princess? What's with the name? I think I missed that episode. Paul, the snow princess is uh, is my girlfriend who is from a cold part of the United States. And that is her code name as a result of that. And that's all. So there you go. There you go. Nick. Hey, Buck. We've also I I like to keep uh, some like to keep the private life a bit a bit private. I think that's that's been a, a, a life lesson. Nick, uh, hey, Buck, I found you on iHeartRadio and love the show. I'm a U.S. Navy vet, and your commentary meshes perfectly with my beliefs. Unfortunately, I don't think your message is reaching enough people. Keep it up, and God bless. Nick, thank you so much, and thank you for your service. I would say that I agree with you because I think the the message of this show is never really reaching enough people because I want it to reach everyone in the country who agrees and who sees the world in in a similar fashion and even people who don't agree i want libs to listen to the show too maybe i can convert them to sanity so yes indeed um please do pass the buck and to everyone listening i keep saying it because i'm hoping more and more of you will do it get one or two people in your life to start listening to the buck section show have this be their podcast when they wake up in the morning or this po- the podcast when they're done with work for the day, when they're getting ready for dinner or trying to relax a little bit, you know, put it on and always tell them they don't have to listen to the whole show. You know, they can space it out, listen to the first 30, 40 minutes. You know, I, I think if you if you're a conservative, you want to know what's going on in the country. I would hope that you think that listening to the first 30 or 40 minutes of the Buck Sexton show gets you where you need to be in terms of knowing what really is happening in the country that matters right now. That is my goal. Brad. Reporting live on the ground in Austin, listen to Mark. The mayor here is a lib. He has proposed a mandatory mask rule with the possibility of a 35-day lockdown any minute. There are more homeless under every overpass than there are in Hollywood outside Adam Schiff's office. This place has a fun vibe for a night out, but it also has the vibe of a hot and humid San Francisco without the bridge and bay. Ouch. The nail needs to be put in the coffin of the Freedom Hut ever moving to Austin. I hear the last stronghold is Fort Worth. Choose wisely. Wow, Brad. Producer Mark, how much do you and your Florida relatives pay off Producer Brad? I just want to know. We're giving Brad producer credit already? Oh, no, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, nothing. I don't know. It's just his real opinion. This, sound, this, sounds like a, this sounds like an anti-Texas scam being run by Team Buck Florida, which we appreciate. We appreciate that, but I'm just saying. Feels I'll like start Team Buck. Your real estate listing, listings. Yeah, it feel, feels like Team Buck Florida is like, I don't think so, Texas. You're not getting the Freedom Hut. I'm just saying. I think that's where this is. So we'll see. But I'm team, okay with it. T- <laughs> yeah, I know you are. Team Buck Texas is like, we, we, know, we know where Buck's heart is, though. So it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be tough. Uh, Crow. That's the cool name. Greetings, Mr. Buckster and producer Mark. I miss the Buck slap. Every time you play a silly liberals diatribe, a momentary pause, and I hear a few buck slaps in my head. The worse the liberal, the more buck slaps I hear. Uh, only you won't, you don't play them. Wish you would. Listening to KFAB most evenings, even though I'm down in southwest New Mexico. Also of note, named my new cat Buck, a feral wild cat. He liked listening to your radio program, and it helped me to rehabilitate him. Now he is a good pet. I call him the Buckster. Shields, hi to you, my man. May God help us out of this mess. Crow! You have great names, Crow and Buckster. These are very powerful, excellent names. Producer Mark, do you have the buck slap on the board? Like, if we wanted to do it, could you do it? I think it's been lost in our uh, work-from-home move. Hmm. If I found it and gave it to you, could we start using a buck slap again? Sure. 
I think I think the Buck Slap is in the is in the Freedom Hut archive somewhere. I probably have it somewhere. I'd have to really dig. Yeah, we'll find it. You know, we'll we find weren't it. giving much notice when we decided to move. Andy, hey Buck and Mark, I guess the main message is thank you. With all the crap we have to deal with, you and the other conservative voices making fun of it allows me to breathe. Just tells me I'm not alone. Every chance I get, I wear my Gadsden flag, Trump shirt, etc. Uh, it lets people know they agree with me that it's okay to stand up and express your conservative beliefs. If someone sees my shirt, I hope they say, you know, maybe I'll wear mine. Uh, plus, liberals don't have guns. Conservatives need to play offense. God bless you guys. Very str- Oh, God bless you too, man. Andy, that's the show. I had to run quick at the end there. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you tomorrow. Shield time.